So hello everyone, I'm Remy Matas, and I will uh, talk about PHP filter chains and how to exploit them. And uh, basically, I would like to uh, thanks a lot to uh, the ACLU team uh, for having me there, and uh, I hope you will enjoy this talk. So I'm a pen tester at Synactive, which is a French uh, offensive company, uh, which you may be heard of uh, because we we do a lot of uh, different work, like uh, reverse pen test development. We also have a response incident team, so maybe you heard of them. Uh, so let's get started. Uh, first of all, we'll start with a little local file inclusion story. I'll explain to you what is local file inclusion and uh, why we would like to use filter chains instead of uh, other tricks. After that, I'll present you two ways to exploit them. The first one will be to use local file inclusion in order to get remote code execution. Second one is a blind file leak based on an error-based record. And uh, I've already done this presentation during Path Assault uh, this year, but there was new stuff uh, coming from that point, uh, and uh, including one CV affecting the MISP. So I will uh, show you how to exploit the error-based oracle from uh, this CV. And uh, to conclude, I will show you the limits and usage of uh, this kind of trick and uh, show you that uh, it can be quite impacting, but there are some prerequisites. So, local file inclusion. I'm pretty sure uh, most of you already heard of this kind of uh, vulnerabilities. And uh, so, we can uh, dispatch them in uh, four cases. First one is one way to get remote code execution. Basically, you can, uh, for example, try to load a PHP resource on the file system and try to get a file upload on it in order to load it. You can also try to leak file content, for example, sources of the application. If we're talking for PHP, that will be, for example, an index.php or this kind of stuff. But you can also try to add some tricks to that. For example, pass traversal, which has really infamous, and uh, that will allow you to escape the current uh, file system contest. And the last one, which is a less common one, is a denial of service by using local file inclusion. In this example, uh, we can, for example, try to load a really huge resource on the file system in order to make uh, the server load a huge files. So regarding PHP itself, there are already a lot of tricks, and uh, some of them are already patched. For example, uh, in uh, nowadays, it was possible to directly include resources by using the HTTP wrapper instead of the file wrapper, which is used by default. And you could try to load uh, resources from external servers if the, the application was vulnerable. Uh, this is not the case anymore. Now there is the allow you were include option on PHP uh, configuration, and it's basically uh, disabled by default now. Another one, which is pretty, uh, um, I mean, known by uh, InfoSec, is a null byte trick. On PHP, it was patched since uh, PHP 5.4, and uh, it allowed you to uh, redefine the, the end of the file, and for example, to set the allowed uh, extension, and to try to bypass some uh, whitelist or, or filters on it. But uh, it's patched since PHP 5.4, so you know, it's been already a long time. And uh, after that, we talked about pass traversal, which is basically the dot slash trick. And it uh, can be patched with the option open base dir, but unfortunately, it's not enforced on many PHP configurations. This option uh, allows you to define one directory where all the application and all its context uh, will be accessed. And basically, from a local file inclusion, it will block you from accessing other stuff on the file system. And finally, one of the most common one is the file upload itself. You will try to upload a file on the system and after that, load it from a local file inclusion in order to get remote code execution or XSS or whatever. And, uh, you know, the entire talk could uh, be about uh, local file inclusion tricks. There are so many of them, but uh, we are not here to discuss all of them, but we will focus on PHP filter chains. But, you know, I already talked, uh, told you that there is so many tricks for uh, local file inclusion. So why would you want to use uh, filter chains instead of other cool tricks? So uh, we'll try to uh, answer this question during this talk. 
And first of all, I need to explain to you what are PHP filter chains, basically. Such uh, like uh, HTTP file, uh, FTP wrappers, you can try to call the PHP wrapper itself. And there is an option which will allow you to load filters and apply it to one resource on the server. So, for example, there are many of them. There is a string filters, which allows you to, uh, for example, encode to rot 13 or to try to put your string to uppercase and, and so on. There are also other conversion filters, such as the base64 encoding, which you can apply to the resource you are loading on the file system. And uh, one which we will discuss about a lot is the uh, convert.iconv filter, which allows you to jump from one encoding table to another, and which is the, you know, all the trick on PHP filter chains are based on this wrapper. Uh, there is also the compression filters and uh, other undocumented ones, such as the dead chunk filter, uh, which we will also be using on uh, later during this talk. So, concretely, what does it look like? For example, there, I put the chain hello hack.lu on the file tmp test, and after that, I'm using the function, PHP function file get contents, in order to load it from PHP filter wrapper. There, I'm applying some uh, stuff to it. For example, I am converting the chain to base64. I am also putting in it to uppercase. And finally, I'm applying a root 13 uh, conversion to it. So as you can see from hello hack.lu, we are really messing with the chain. And it will be loaded by, the, by PHP itself and uh, given back to the user. And that's basically uh, what is a PHP filter chain. And the main idea there will be to chain many of those in order to do cool stuff. So at the end of the talk, we will uh, have to answer to this question, how useful are PHP filter chains actually? So let's get started with a way to get remote code execution by using PHP filter chains. Uh, to start, I will just uh, start with a quote, which is from Antoine Lavoisier, once said, nothing is lost, nothing is created, everything is transformed. And uh, you know, during this talk, we will mess a lot with PHP and what it's doing. And you know, even sometimes PHP doesn't know what it's doing itself. So we have to adapt it a little and say everything is transformed. Characters are created sometimes and some parts can be lost. It's okay, you know, we're working on a PHP system. So let's see how we can go to this point. So first of all, I talked about the convert.icom filter. And basically, it will allow you to jump from one encoding table to another. So let's show you how it works with a more concrete example. The main idea there will be to prepend the eight character at the start of the chain start. So first of all, we are playing a new TF16 encoding, which will basically prepend the byte order mark to our chain. And uh, by default, it will be FFFE. Uh, so the order will be a little in jack. And after that, we basically just generated data at the start of our uh, chain. Now we can mess with it. So let's apply a second encoding, which will be a Latin 6-1. And from FFFE, we are not worki now working with Greek characters. For example, the first letter there is the character Kra, which is a Greek one. And it's uh, really a key for us, but the CRA letter has also a definition on the UTF-16 uh, encoding table, and we jumped basically from the chain start to a chain containing the eight letter at the start of it. So, how can we do it from PHP itself? So there, as you can see, I put this chain start inside the file, then I'm loading it by applying my icon conversions. And as you can see, at the end of the day, I've got my 8, which is prepended as a, at the starting of the chain, which is really coming out, right? But if you have a Kenai, you can see that there are so many junk data and that we won't be able to do something from this point. But that's where uh, fun things starts with PHP. Basically, the main idea there will be to be able to uh, generate 64 uh, cases in order to cover all 64 encoding uh, characters. And so <clears throat> we will also use another cool way 
to uh, get junk data away using Base64 from PHP itself. So there, in the first line, as you can see, I am encoding the chain Base64 with PHP. Everything was works as expected. After that, I'm trying to do it and to decode it from uh, my CLI, which works as expected, you know. Then I do the same with PHP. And after that, I mean, I'm trying to do other things from this point. I'm adding special characters, such uh, an at at the start of uh, this uh, chain. And if I'm trying from the CLI, I've got an error, which has to be expected since these characters are not from the base64 uh, encoding. But if I'm doing the same thing with PHP, you know, it just tell me, okay, everything is all right. Uh, I just uh, drop all uh, bad characters and do, uh, as expected, uh, the decoding from uh, what I can read. And that's basically one way to uh, get rid of junk data at the start of our PHP filter encoding chains. So, there. I'm doing the same thing as I was doing, but from PHP filter chains themselves. So there, I'm using the chain start and uh, using uh, decoding from the base64 I'm using and re-encoding it. And as you can see, from the chain we discussed already, the eight character is appended, uh, sorry, prepended to the chain, but there is not junk data anymore. And so we can work with clean data and we generated our data. Just keep in mind that PHP truncates every character which are not uh, modulo 4, uh, because, you know, uh, why not? Uh, it can seem like a lot of work and uh, hardcore to understand right now, but, uh, you know, uh, there is a common line interface uh, tool you can use, so just uh, feel free to, uh, to use it. You can choose what you want to prepend to one, uh, to one uh, file, and so it will be... Uh, Used, usable to use a, a PHP encoding or whatever. So a little example exploiting uh, this uh, kind of uh, issue. There, the vulnerable code will be the include function. I'm trying to prepend the following chain, which basically will uh, do a code system and uh, is a common web shell. And after that, the code I've prepended to the file will get executed. And as you can see, there are many junk data at the end, but it's not a, an issue, you know, because the uh, system call has been done. And uh, as you can see, I've just executed the command ID on the file system by using a huge uh, PHP filter chain. And uh, so that's pretty convenient because uh, I'm also using the PHP wrapper, PHP temp, which allow me to call whatever resource and uh, temporary file on uh, the file system and it will work on both Linux and Windows. So you don't have even to understand how it works, just copy paste and it will work if you have uh, this kind of primitive. All right, so that was the, first, the easy part, I mean. Now we are going to talk about the blind file leak. So there, there are three parts you need to understand. Three ways uh, to use PHP filter chain in order to leak data from files with a narrow-based Oracle. First of all, we need to, to trigger the error. So we need to have a max size overflow. After that, we need to be able to leak the first character of the file we are uh, loading. And after that, find a way to rotate characters in order to access to the rest of the file. First of all, the max size overflow. There, we are applying several uh, icon conventions which will have for effect to multiply by four the uh, size of the file we are loading each time we are calling them. And so from the chain starts, I'm using the UCS4 encoding and uh, with something like uh, 12 to 13 encodings, uh, there is a time where I will uh, trigger the memory limit uh, from PHP, which is by default 128 megabytes. And that's uh, the whole ID uh, in order to get the error from PHP by using PHP filter chains. So there I'm chaining the encodings. And as you can see, the chain starts, will grow and grow. And there is a time where uh, we'll trigger the allowed might size from the file server. So from this point, we can use this behavior by changing other encoding. So we will need to have two distinct cases in order to have an oracle. So there we will be using the dechunk uh, filter, 
which is an undocumented one, which we discussed already at the start of this presentation. And basically, it's a way to send chunk data. And at the first, uh, you will have to define a size in order to define the package you are sending after that. So that will be an hexadecimal value. And if the first value is not hexadecimal, basically the chunked uh, filter won't work. So there you have an example. The first letter of the chain is a B in a lower case. We are applying a filter chain with the dead chunk filter at the start of it, and nothing happens because the data is uh, chunked and the server is trying to uh, load it as chunk data. So the rest of the chain won't work. But if the first character of the chain is not an hexadecimal character, then the dead chunk filter won't work, and basically you will still have the alone memory size triggering. And from this point, we have an oracle. We have one uh, side where you will not have an error if the first character is hexadecimal, but if it's not, then you will have an error. So from this point, how do you use this behavior in order to get access to the first character? We will be using the uh, CP930 codec in order to leak the first character. And you have to understand something first. Since when there is an exact character, uh, there is no overflow. So you have a no overflow zone. But with the codec CP930, you are basically your ASCII codec, but with an offset of one. So each time you are applying a 930 encoding, then you jump by one. And so there will be a point, if you start with an hexadecimal character, where you will leave your no overflow zone and trigger the error and the exception. So there, let's get started. Imagine that you have a, a file which uh, contains the D character as uh, its first letter. So there, we are still on the no overflow zone. So if we are applying our filter chain, nothing will, will happen. After that, we are applying a first CP930 conversion. So now we are not working with D, but with E. Let's apply it a second time. We are not working with E, but with F. And if we apply the encoding a third time, as you can see, we are leaving our no overflow zone, and there the error will get triggered. And so, since we done three encodings, we know that we started from the letter D, because there is no other case where it will work. So, uh, just to uh, a little example with a little uh, PHP script to show you that it works. So, first of all, we start with the B character at the start of our uh, file. And so, as you can see, there will be five CP900 and uh, 30 conversion. So, the first character has to be B, because there is five encodings before the error. After that, we do the same with the D, as we saw uh, during uh, the previous example. And so there is only three encodings. But if we are doing it with other uh, non-hexadecimal characters, as you can see, zero will trigger directly. So we can't tell right away what character was uh, there. But as we saw, we are able to change the character by jumping from one encoding to another. So basically, if I'm, for example, putting the first character to uppercase before doing that, I'm able to leak more characters, and there are other filter chains which uh, are av available. So basically, there are oracles for at least uh, 64 characters, which allow us to uh, leak any character by using this trick. And once again, uh, okay, my bad. So there is also the rotated path. So we only discussed a way to leak the first character of the, of the file, but now we need to access other. As we discussed, there is a byte order mark, which is normally to, uh, used in order to tell you if you are working with Bing or Little Indian, and you are able to uh, switch characters by using this encoding by default. But you won't be able to uh, leak other characters than the four, uh, first one by using that. So there, we are once again using our base64 encoding decoding uh, trick. And so there, we are once again prepending data. And by applying another encoding in order to switch characters and, uh, with uh, themselves, we are able, by deleting junk data, to access characters which should not be accessible 
such as the fifth and sixth one. And so, you know, everything is only filters chained together and trying to make the stuff done. So there, there is, uh, once again, a little tool which uh, automated everything. And you can uh, use it as you uh, like. You can use, uh, use it as did MISP uh, themselves in order to uh, discover a CVE on it. And uh, it was discovered by uh, Luciano Rigetti. And uh, if you are looking uh, at uh, this presentation later, I hope you are enjoying it. So there, uh, there is a error based oracle which was passed uh, since uh, July on uh, MISP. It's a post-authenticated one. And basically, we will need to uh, look a little further inside the MISP code in order to understand what is going on. So there. First of all, MISP is based on a model view controller um, pattern. And so in order to know where is the logic of your data, you need to start to have a look at controllers. So there we are starting with a serverless controller on the edit function. So there, there is basically the parameter this request data, which will be passed to the function self cert at the end, as you can see there. So let's jump to the save cert function and see what's going on. There, we have the server parameter, which we fully control, and there is a server subm tmp name, which is passed to another interesting function, which is read from file. What you have to understand there is we control fully this parameter from the start to the end. And so let's have a look to the read from file function itself. And as you can see, the parameter that we fully uh, control is passed to the file get contents uh, function. So the bug is right there. But you know, there are some uh, verifications after that. So on a normal case, we won't be able to do anything from this point. But by using our error, Oracle, we are able basically to trigger the error before the verifications are made. And so that's where the bug is. So. Uh, first of all, before uh, I tried to uh, POC, uh, make a proof of concept uh, by myself, and I didn't really not uh, know how MISP worked uh, nowadays. So first of all, I uh, bypassed the CSRF token, which is defined by default on MISP. After that, I've added everything uh, in every single parameter in order to make it a multi-part form data, which was uh, really a pain. And after that, I've contacted someone from MIS, which basically me, uh, told me that there is a JSON API, and uh, I just lost uh, one day of my life for nothing. So uh, that was the payload I used in the first time, which is really huge. And that was the payload uh, which I used uh, in the second time, uh, based on the Luciano ones. And uh, just to be clear, if uh, you ever do some uh, researches on the MIS, uh, they are really, really reactive. I mean. I, uh, I sent them a message. I had an answer one hour later. So if you ever find any uh, vulnerability on uh, MIS, just contact them. They are really reactive, and it was really pleasant. So you know, now we are going to. Uh, I'm going to show you how it works concretely. At the top of this screen, you have uh, my uh, payload, which I just show you. At the bottom of the script, uh, that's just a cat on the local error messages from uh, MISP itself. And so, as you can see there, there is a null memory size uh, which is triggered, uh, which we already discussed. That's our error. And at the top of the screen, you can see that uh, there are some uh, characters which are leaked slowly but surely. And so there, I'm just trying to leak the uh, database configuration uh, from the file system and uh, which basically contains a password uh, and clear text to connect to the MIS database. So that can be used in this way. It will take some time, but at the end of the day, it will work, and you will be able to uh, leak a MIS per database uh, configuration by using this trick. And uh, my MIS configuration was bad, so maybe if it was cleaner, it will be quicker. OK. And so uh, since uh, July, there was a patch which uh, was published and uh, that controlled the uh, parameters that we discussed before uh, calling file get contents. OK, so now that's cool and all. But uh, as you can see, it took a ton of time in order to leak the file. And so we'll discuss a little bit more about limits and uh, usage, practical usage of this uh, trick. 
So the first one, which is uh, really painful, is that when you are trying to exploit it from a get parameter, you will have this kind of error. In fact, when you are using uh, URL parameters, you will have a size limit of them, which is like something like 8K bits, bytes, and uh, you won't be able to do uh, PHP filters too long. And uh, when you are using the error-based Oracle itself, you won't be able to leak more than 135 characters uh, with the current state of this trick. Uh, the second one is that uh, you won't be able to uh, be as wild as uh, it was with a far wrapper. Uh, maybe you've heard of it, but basically it was a way to uh, trigger and serialize if you had a uh, file upload on the file stamp. And you will only be able to use the following wrappers from uh, PHP uh, wrapper itself. It uh, includes reading, writing, appending data, and that's basically all. So to do a quick recap, from to get uh, remote code execution, if you control fully the data on include or require, then you're good to go, it will work. But on the blind file leak, you will be able to exploit really unexpected functions. For example, get image size, read file, and as long as you have a file read, the trick will work, even if you can't leak the file content by using the normal behavior of the function. For example, MD5 file will allow you to have the MD5 uh, value of your file, and uh, you will be able to, uh, to trigger the trick by calling uh, PHP filter chain from MD5 file, which is pretty convenient. And so, now that we've discussed everything, how you tool our PHP filter chains actually? Well, the first cool thing that you need to understand with uh, PHP filter chains is that you don't need to read, write everything on uh, the file system itself. You will only chain many uh, filters, and you don't have to know even one file on the file system, since, as we discussed, you can just load a temporary file, and it will work. And if you are trying to read a file on the file system, you only have uh, to have a user which can read this file on the file system. Regarding the remote code execution, the trick is really, really unlikely. Because, uh, as we saw before, there is only two possibilities. If you control a require or include a value, which is really unlikely, but can be cool on CTF or uh, ask the box. For the blind records, that's a totally different story because the trick uh, is called on unexpected functions, and therefore you won't have... Uh, nowadays, all developers won't have in mind that you can leak a file from uh, trying to get its MD5 version. And uh, that's really something that's not really new. But the trick suffered already before even starting, because the far wrapper was there before, and so many public projects are already patched uh, regarding wrappers themselves, and so they are already patched for a PHP wrapper before it even uh, was a thing. The other uh, problem we can uh, see is that when using the get verb when uh, trying to exploit parameters, you won't be able to leak as much data as uh, it will be with the post uh, data. And so that's it for me. I hope you enjoyed uh, this talk. Uh, there are two QR codes that you can scan. Uh, it's basically a link to uh, our GitHub uh, account. Just to be clear, I did not find any of these tricks. It was discovered by CTF players. Uh, the first one, in order to get remote code execution, was discovered by Locknop, and the second one by Ashkeaton, uh, in order to get an error-based Oracle. I just adapted the trick and tried to, uh, to have uh, useful uh, command line interfaces from them in order to you to just do a dot slash and it works. And so that's it for me. If you have any questions, uh, go ahead. I will be pleased to answer them.